Are you thinking about buying a home and don't want to make a mistake that's going to haunt you for years? You have come to the right place. This video, I've got a special guest, Dan Michaud, and he is going to dig in to what it's going to take to get you on the path to home ownership the right way. I'm David Crum, and I would love to speak with you if you're considering buying a home to see what I can do to help you. Now, if you'd like to speak with me or contact Dan directly, our information is both linked in the description below. Let's get right into those questions for Dan. Dan, thanks so much for meeting with me today. Can you just introduce yourself and your company and tell us a little bit about you? Sure. Thanks, David. I'm happy to be here. Um, my name is Dan Michaud. I'm a mortgage lender with Network Funding. Our company is in about 38 states, and uh, we have a local office here in Greenville, South Carolina, and um, we help people buy and with purchase mortgages on primary residences, second homes, and investment properties. What kind of mortgage loans do you specialize in? We really specialize in people buying either that first or second home. That's the majority of our business. They're they're either buying the very first home starting out in, into real estate um, for a house that they're going to live in, what we call a primary residence, or they are considering selling that and moving up to something that meets their needs a little bit better. Um, so that's the majority of what we see that we're doing. But we have seen an increase in rental properties as well. People buying that want to get into the real estate market and have a rental um, in this area. We seem to see a lot of that right now. How do you help borrowers find the right mortgage for their needs and financial situation? So a lot of what I do is very conversational with my borrowers. Um, I get to know what they're trying to accomplish. Is this going to be a first house that they're only going to be in a few years? Or is this something that they view as uh, long-term uh, housing for them? And so um, we're asking a lot of questions before we ever really um, start working on their file and, and do a full pre-approval for them. So getting to know them, getting to know what the nature of their income is. Are they employed? Are they self-employed? Is their income coming from retirement funds? Those kind of things. Um, really helps us to figure out what loan program that they're going to be in. Dan, what affects interest rates in the market and how do they vary based on the credit score and other factors? That's a great question, David. So interest rates are really tied to the bond markets. Um, and much like the stock markets that most people are familiar with, bond markets go up and down on a daily basis depending on the economy and what's going on in the economy. That can be on a global scale or just in the U.S., and so um, traditionally, when the stock market was not doing well, people would put money into the bond market. The bond market's considered a little more stable. And as bond prices went up, because more people were putting money into that market, bond yields go down. And those are the yields are what affect interest rates um, mostly. A lot of people have the misconception that the Fed will control interest rates, and that's not really tied to mortgages. That's more your short-term borrowing rates like credit cards and equity lines. But on first mortgages, which is what we specialize in, it's more tied to the bond market. Now, on the other hand, what happens um, or what, what also affects your interest rates are the borrower's situation. Um, those things are credit scores, um, loan to values, how much money they're putting down, what loan program that they're using. So, for instance, if somebody has credit that's not quite as stellar, then um, we may end up putting them in an FHA loan. An FHA loan um, is more forgiving when it comes to credit scores. So you're going to get a better rate on an FHA loan if your credit score isn't as high. On the other hand, on a conventional loan, which is kind of a more desirable loan typically because it's um, going to get you a better interest rate, um, that type of loan program is more sensitive to credit scores. So if your credit scores are lower and you're not putting as much money down, you're probably not going to want to do a conventional loan. You're probably going to want to do an FHA loan. So there's a number of factors that really affect um, the interest rate that a borrower can get. What kind of fees or charges should borrowers expect to pay when working with a mortgage lender? Great question. So mortgage lenders will all have fees that cover their items, such as underwriting your file or processing your file. In addition to those, you're going to pay things such as a credit report fee. You're going to pay for a flood certification. You're going to pay for a tax uh, service contract and an appraisal. So there are some ancillary fees that aren't necessarily lender fees, but they are associated with the lender. But typically you're looking at somewhere around $2,000 in total fees for most lenders to do your loan. How long does the mortgage application and approval process typically take? 
So when I'm having a conversation with somebody initially, I generally try to do an application over the, over the phone. I feel like that makes people a little bit more comfortable with the process. And it also allows me to only ask the questions that I need to know, as opposed to a website that's going to ask a whole bunch of questions, some of which I don't really need to know the answers to. So generally, you're talking five to 10 minutes for the application and the pre-qualification takes about an hour after that. And then from start to finish, we're closing loans generally in about a two to three week period. What documentation will borrowers need to provide during the mortgage application process? So as a mortgage lender, we're always going to ask them for some documentation regarding their assets and their income and any other special circumstances. For instance, if they're selling a house, we're going to need a copy of the contract and the uh, closing disclosure for the sale of the house they're selling um, that they may be using funds for our transaction. So we always have to know the source of the assets. That's a big thing with underwriting loan underwriting guidelines. So we're going to ask for bank statements um, or other statements from retirement accounts if they're taking funds from retirement to use for their purchase. Um, the other thing is in regard to their income. We're going to ask them for their most recent um, pay stubs and probably their last W-2 or maybe their last two W-2s. If they're self-employed, we're also going to need tax returns. That's basically it for most people. Can you explain the different types of mortgage products, such as fixed rate and adjustable rate mortgages? Sure. That's a great question. So most of the mortgages being done these days are fixed rate mortgages. And what that means is that your interest rate can never change. So when you're looking at your payment and what it's going to be for the next foreseeable future, it consists of several components. Usually it's your principal and interest, which is the actual loan. And then you're going to have some taxes in there. You're going to have some insurance in there. And if you don't put 20% down, you may have some mortgage insurance, commonly known as PMI. And so the principal and interest portion of that payment, which is really the biggest part of your payment, um, is the part that if you have a fixed rate, that's never going to change over the course of the mortgage. If you have an adjustable rate, it will change as the market goes up and goes down and whatever index that's tied to, you're going to see an adjustment to that portion of your payment. And so what we're finding in most cases, and it has been this way for quite a while now um, because of what the market is doing in regards to interest rates, is that fixed rates are not that much different than the adjustable rates. And so most people don't want the risk of an adjustable rate mortgage. And so they're choosing to take the fixed rate for just a slight difference in interest rate. How do you stay up to date on changes in the mortgage industry and adjust your recommendations accordingly? That's a great question, and that's something that is done on a daily basis, really. As a mortgage loan officer, it's my responsibility to stay current on new regulations, new loan products, new new changes in the industry that affect the borrower. Um, And so we get notifications from Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac, in addition to notifications from all of our investors. And they are sending out bulletins on a regular basis. And normally we have a couple weeks before those things go into effect when a change is being made. And so if I have a borrower that might be in a situation that one of those new um, changes affects, I'm going to make sure that we've addressed that before closing and that we've um, already gotten the documentation that's needed to make sure that that's not going to be a problem as they go through the process. So staying on top of that stuff is very crucial to making sure that the mortgage process goes smoothly for a customer while we're trying to help them. What advice can you give to first-time home buyers looking for a mortgage? So I have a little speech I call my beans and rice speech. And basically what that's all about is when you're trying to buy a house, there's nothing wrong with sacrifice. And so if you've got to scale back on your eating out, uh, cut out the Starbucks habit or whatever it is that you like to spend money on that is going to affect your ability to save funds for a down payment and closing costs, That's a time when it's really a good time to cut those things out or reduce them as much as possible. So as a first time home buyer, the things that you want to have is consistency. You don't want to make job changes if you're thinking about buying a house in the near future. You want to have a consistent job history. Um, It's even more important if your income is based on commissions or other adjustable types of incomes. So in those situations, it's very important that we have consistent just a level history of earning because we're going to go back and we're going to look at your earnings over the last maybe 12 months to see how consistent that has been. Um, So as far as job is concerned, we'd love it if you didn't change jobs. If um, we're talking about assets, a pattern of savings is always helpful. Underwriters, who are the ones that give the final full approval on the loans, love to see 
a pattern of savings. If I've got somebody that is living at home with mom and dad and they're not paying rent and they're going to be going into a mortgage situation, the underwriter is going to look at their bank statements and say, okay, at the end of the month, this person doesn't have much money left. How are they going to afford a mortgage? And so if we get bank statements that show a pattern of savings, then the underwriter looks at it from a different perspective and they see, okay, this person's been able to save their money on a monthly basis. I can see how they're going to be able to make that mortgage payment. And so it makes sense. So those are the two things. The other item is related to credit. Um, as a first time home buyer, you want to have a little bit of debt. Uh, maybe a small credit card where you keep a little balance on it and make your monthly payment on time. But the lower you can keep your monthly debt obligations, the better it is when it comes to a debt ratio calculation. That's going to allow you to afford more of a home and get into a nicer neighborhood when you're first starting out. How do you ensure that the mortgage process goes smoothly and efficiently for your clients? So there's a lot of moving parts when it comes to the mortgage process. It starts with that application, but that's really just getting the ball rolling. Once a person goes under contract and they send us a copy of that signed contract to purchase a house or their realtor sends it over to us, that's where we really start going to work. Um, we've got a lot of processes that have to happen in the background. We try to shield the borrower from as many of those as possible because they're things that they don't have to be involved in, but they're checks and balances for the mortgage company and the lenders that we work with. And so um, we try to shield the customer from any of that stuff that they don't need to be involved in and so that they are not overwhelmed because buying a house has a lot of um, moving parts and they're concerned with, the borrower is normally concerned with um, making sure that the home is in good condition and getting their inspections done and everything like that. And so we want to be working on their loan in the background while they're doing that so that they don't have to be stressing out over their mortgage. One of the things that we try to do with our clients is be very proactive and work with goals in mind and not deadlines in mind. And so we gather documents from the customer as early in the process as possible. And what that does is allows us more time to look for any red flags on those documents, anything that an underwriter might see that would cause us to have to get more documentation from the borrower. We like to take care of as early in the process as possible. I mentioned earlier that a closing usually takes about two to three weeks. Sometimes they're 30 days or 45 days, depending on the situation with the seller. And so we like to get everything out of the way as early in that process as possible. So then if we need to move a closing up for some reason, we have the ability to do that. But to make that process smooth, we have good people that work behind the scenes. And so that has been the most important thing to me to make sure that the people producing the product that I am delivering are doing a good job. And I have to stay on top of that on a daily basis. Dan, if somebody wants to reach out, what's the best way to get in contact with you? So the best way to contact me anytime is directly on my direct line. And that number is 864-630-7283. can also remember it by 864-630-RATE. So... That's the best way. You can text me or call me on that number. I also have a, a website that you can submit an application on. And if I get an application that somebody hasn't given me a heads up on, I'm going to get a notification as soon as it comes through. So I will follow up with that person as soon as I see the application come through and give them an expectation of when they will hear back from me on that pre-approval, depending on how busy I am at the time or what time of day it is and that kind of thing. But uh, all my contact information will be linked below. And I'd love to help you with your mortgage needs. Thank you so much for watching our video today. I know you got a lot of great content out of Dan. If you'd like to reach either of us, please contact us through the details below. If you have any questions, we would love to hear from you through the contact details below so that we can help you on your journey to home ownership.